Today we got my boy here, Shelby Elias, right? Shelby Elias. I love it. United Wholesale Lending. Yes, right? sir. Uh, I was just speaking with uh, with Peter, yeah. and we were talking about the name, yeah, right, and how it sounds like UWM, right? Yeah. Can Clever. you touch on that? Like, well, was it meant to be? So you know, I want to hear your version. Yeah. So actually, I had just sold my company, right. and I needed to rebrand. Mm -hmm. And what a great way to brand with brand recognition, mm -hmm. as you know, United Wholesale Lending, right? Because right? as a mortgage broker, especially a small independent one, people don't know who we are, right? But they definitely know the name United Wholesale, right. so it helps, and it's great. Yeah, and, and did you have to speak to Matt about that at I, all? I did speak with Matt about it, he's yeah. He's a good so dude, he, he is. He's and a he great cool. And honestly, he wants to do anything that's going to help us oh, out, yeah. and so it's he's a well, phenomenal what's guy. A, not to keep speaking about Matt, but why, uh, every time I see him, yeah. right, he, he remembers my name. He remembers, yeah. like, everyone. I know. And not saying, like, he's just a, he's just a good dude. Yeah. And I think he's like that for a ton of people. He's he just, I mean, he's a, he's, he's a special human being. Phenomenal. Um. But to, to get back, you came all the way out from uh, Sacramento, right? Uh -huh, yeah. And that's where you're from as well? I'm originally from a small town called Manteca. Manteca. Yep. How it's far in, away is it's that? It's in the Central Valley. It's about an hour and a half from Sacramento. Okay. And um, that's where I grew up. I was a super small town guy. I actually grew up as a cowboy, believe it or not. No, stop. Yeah. All right, so I need to know more about this. Quick. Yeah. So well, let's, let's take it back, right? Okay. So I want to get down into who you are, yeah. right? Because we've got to know each other a bit over the past two days. I found out mindset's huge with you guys. Huge. Uh, Work-life balance, mm -hmm. how you're running the company. It's going to yeah. be a little bit different from our talk with with Peter Galvez, your your yeah. Uh, partner, yeah. right? Just the two of you. Um, but let I want to break it down, and get to know you more, let everyone know who you are yeah. as a human being, and that should flow into what we do for a living. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So born in Man Manteca. Manteca. I like yeah. that. I said it right. Yeah. All right. So let's start there. Manteca. You popped out a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. So I grew up in the country. Um, I actually started working at a really young age. My my parents, um, you know, were not not very well off, right? Um, my dad was the only one that provided for the family, super hard worker. And um, my mom, we had four boys in my family. So my mom raised the boys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we grew up on some land and really working for every single thing that we had. So my mom taught me at a really young age that you could have anything you want in life. You just have to figure out how to get it. So I grew up like being the one during marble season, right? At, at school, it was okay. marble month. Marble month. I was the marble, like the marble? dealer. Yeah, marbles, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was the marble dealer. We had pogs growing up. I was yeah, the one man. that sold the pogs. Um, I, I went around door to door and I sold things out of a magazine for profit. So yeah, my yeah. mom would find these opportunities. We were heavily, uh, like in classified ads. So as a family, we would go and we'd look at the classified ads and my parents would literally give me money. And then I would go and negotiate at yard, at yard sales, uh -huh. come home and, uh, start, you know, set, fixing the stuff up and reselling it. Mm -hmm. So I just, I grew up that way, um, kind of being a natural born salesman. What's your dad do? Well, so my dad's a contractor. Okay. And that's kind of how I got into flipping All houses right, cool. and right, reinvesting like in real estate. Okay. Yeah. So my dad's a contractor and, um, that's kind of how I grew up. Just small town guy. And, um, the only reason I even went to college was because my parents told me that I couldn't go because we couldn't oh, afford I like it. That. So that, so that you like your back me. against the wall a bit. I love my back. I against love it. The wall. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Huge. Cool. All right. So. Growing up, uh, we heard that story, but let's jump into, wh well, where did you go to college? I went to college at Sacramento State. That's that, how I ended up is, in Sacramento. Is that is that where Peter went? I can't remember. Yep, yeah, that's where we met. Is that where you met? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you guys met in, in college. Yeah. Um, he his story is he he started selling meat you yeah. know the whole thing but what so what's your story so for me I was a server through college okay um, at the the newest restaurants I kind of flipped around to different restaurants because made the most amount they of money they say being some a server. of the best people to recruit are from the restaurant business yeah. is that a thought in your head too great Not because to I mean honestly you, you got to talk to people you have to build the yeah. relationship and that's, that's what, what it's all about okay so, um, so server so that was huge I was a server and then um, while I was in college I joined a fraternity. And we had to pick a mentor. And literally, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't even belong in college, right? So I'm there working, putting myself through, through school. And, um, and really, that mentor that I got assigned to me, he was a mortgage broker. Okay. And that's kind of how it all, all came about. You know, right. I just kept being persistent, bugging the guy. 
And, you know, he was the first successful guy that I ever met. I didn't, I didn't know anybody that was successful in okay. my whole life. So. so did you end up working for him? I did. All right, right out of college or even during college? During college, During yeah. college. So yeah. you're about, what, 19, 19 20 maybe? Old. Yeah. 19, you got in. Yeah. And uh, it was a mortgage broker, right? Well, no, actually, okay. I worked for AmeriQuest. So he, AmeriQuest. He, he wasn't a broker, you know, at that time. Got it. I worked for him at AmeriQuest, um, and I, I was retail. So this is like 2004-ish? 2004 to 5, yeah. Because you're what, 36, 35? Yep. Okay, I'm 36, so in that same yeah. same boat. Okay, so AmeriQuest, yeah. that's where you started. Yeah. Um, how was it there? You were in a loan officer, right? Oh, man, it was insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, guys were driving literally like Ferraris to work. <laughs> right. It was crazy. I mean, guys were making so much money at that time that it was inspiring. You know, you, you came to work. And they, they literally you had people walking around with the menus for lunch. They didn't want you to leave. So it was like, hey, free lunch. W- what are we ordering? You just ordered food. Your dry cleaning was done at work. It. You had the Red Bull people coming through, giving out Red Bulls. I mean, it was insane. It was a crazy time to be in the industry. Right. So were you, uh, were you doing cold calling? Like, what was your initial, as a loan officer, how were you making money? So I worked on a division called Portfolio Retention. And I think a lot of brokers uh, really need to focus on this because okay. this is a key position. So within my business, I have a portfolio retention um, department in my own business. And basically what we did was we would do mail, direct mail to all of our past clients. Okay. We do email marketing campaigns to our clients. We cold called all of our past clients. So that's what I worked. I worked in that division that had all of our past clients and I helped retain those and recycle those, those clients and okay. run them back through and create different uh, opportunities. For okay, them. cool, cool. So now, were you getting paid a commission on that as yeah. well? Or was it salary? I'm it was just, salary just plus how commission. It started. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, what happened after uh, AmeriQuest? Where'd you go after there? So, I I rode it until the wheels fell off. So, basically, that company went out of business. I at that point decided, okay, I want to open up my own company. So, I need to sit in every seat. I need to learn how this everything works. Mm-hmm. I became an AE. I studied, got my broker's license. And then at that point, I, I got everything set up and I started my own mortgage company. Okay. And honestly, the best part about all of that is that other top mortgage companies were going out of business. So what that allowed me to do was recruit top talent. So you started when things were, were bad. Yeah. You started the company. I've yeah. seen that a lot with a lot of successful people. Yeah. They got into it when it was a tough time for everyone else. That's yeah. when they started. Yeah. So you started in that... I get 2007-ish then, eight? Yeah, yeah. Is that when you right. got yeah, in? Exactly. I, and you and at that point, you started recruiting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So uh, have you been, at that point, were you selling? Were you a loan officer as well? Yeah, yeah. So you were producing um, and recruiting, and yeah. then what did you grow that company to in a, in so a, co- in a couple I, years? I, you had that? No, I mean, I grew that company. I didn't I didn't get out of that that partnership and sell that company until the end of 2015. Cool. Okay. So I grew that to over 200 loan officers. Yeah. We had branches all over, all the way from uh, the Bay Area, all the way up to Orville, which is literally the entire, all of Northern California. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is that when, uh, when, uh, when Pete worked for you? Yeah. I, yeah. He made, he mentioned, he's like, no, that's when I worked for Shelby. Yeah. I love yeah. <laughs> how he says that. <laughs> so he got in, right? Mm-hmm. And then eventually you sold that. You grew that mm-hmm. and, and you sold it and then realized you guys wanted to rebrand. Yeah, right? rebrand and come up, really start focusing more on culture. Because before we yeah, didn't yeah, really yeah. focus on culture. It was like, any loan officer wants a job, we're going to hire you. And, you know, there wasn't that much value. There wasn't that much um you know, culture. And I think mm-hmm. that that's huge. I think that you need to be surrounded by good culture with good people. You need to enjoy your job coming to work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your spouse should want to support you. And, you know, if, if your spouse doesn't love what you're doing, then that that's probably a sign that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, deep down, you might not be truly happy. Right. So yeah, and, it, and it's a very, it's a, let's be honest, it's a tough industry. It is. It's, it's chaotic. Tough. There's a lot of, there can be ups and downs. So yeah. it's extremely important to have that, that culture. Mm-hmm. And then also having the right people there. I mean, that's part of culture, having the right people. Yeah. And I love to touch on that. Um, cause uh, like you were talking yesterday yeah. about the three qualities you look for. Yeah. You don't necessarily look for experience, nope. right? Because culture is so important to you yeah. um, that what are those three qualities? So those three qualities that I look for in a new hire is I want them to fit the culture. I want them to be smart, right? Smart doesn't mean that you necessarily have a degree, but you're smart. Yeah, so yeah. I, I literally make sure that they're smart individuals. 
And I look for them, the willingness to want to learn. Are they coachable, coachable. right? So I want them to be coachable. I want them to want to be successful. I want to hear their goals. I want to know that they have dreams, that they, they want to be a part of a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the cultures, I mean, how many, how many do you have now at the company? How many so LOs? Or total, we probably have around 100. About 100 loan yeah. officers. And not, not just loan officers. Okay. Because, you know, we have, we run a real estate company, we have a mortgage company, and we have all of our support staff. So it, in total, about 100. Okay, yeah. cool. And then how about support staff? Because that's, that's obviously important for... Yeah, it's huge. And they're important on culture, too. Yep. And for independent mortgage brokers, I think that that's kind of a tough subject, right? Because a lot of them, I see themselves like overextending themselves and doing too much and not reinvesting in some people right. to, to help them, you know, their support staff. So something that I took from Matt Ishbia is overstaffed by design. I'm constantly looking for good people to plug in, okay? Even if I don't even have a job for them, when I find a good person, I bring them on, and it's surprising how fast that that person is now packed with work. And, but that's the key to growing. So what you wanna do is you wanna look to find the things that you love doing and only do those things. Okay. And then hire and delegate other people. You know, to do that. Don't be afraid to move people around too. Sometimes I'll hire a guy in for compliance and he ends up making a great processor. Right. Or something totally different that I, that I wouldn't even, like I, I hired uh, one of my compliance guys, his name's Nate, phenomenal guy, great, great employee. And I hired him on for compliance, but then I found out that he loves like video games and he's really passionate mm -hmm. about learning software. So I turned him into a, a position where it's just called automation. So what he does is he automates all of our processes. He, he literally writes the code to automate our lead follow-up, our in-process follow-up, our post-closing wow, so follow-up. you guys are writing code. You have someone writing code. Pretty much, yeah. That's pretty cool. He, he's literally spider mapping it out. So when I take a lead, how do I, I log that, that person in? How do I communicate with them? So what's the first video that goes out? Well, how about an introduction about myself? Yeah. How about introducing our team? Three days later, let's teach them about, you know, um, maybe what different mortgages are out there mm -hmm. and what might be the best fit for them. And so we keep communicating with them. Same with post-close marketing. This is, this is phenomenal. You want to set this up. So when I close an FHA loan, I hit FHA loan closed. Two months later, automatically, a video goes out. It's like, hey, guys, just want to follow up with you. I hope that you're enjoying your new home. Um, remember, you're in an FHA loan. And our goal is to get you into a conventional loan. So focus on your credit. Mm -hmm. Pay down these, these credits. We need your score to go up. We also need your debt-to-income ratio to go down. So pay some key accounts off so we can get your debt-to-income ratio where we need it to qualify for you know, conventional. So I spit out a couple more videos. By that last video, after they made their sixth payment, it's call me. Right, right, it's right. now time to get you out of conventional or out of FHA into conventional. Phenomenal. And I can see your passion here because that's how you started in the industry, like that's you it. said, right? When you got in, you were, uh, was it, it was in post-closing or what did you call it Portfolio again? Portfolio retention. Por yep. Kind of the same type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. right? Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Um, all right, so can I, can I go over some, maybe some detailed numbers? For, let, sure. Let's take a small uh, shop like myself. Yeah. All right? Um, how detailed do you want to get with if we, if we talk numbers? Yeah. Like I want an example. Oh, it's all good, example. Yeah. All right, cool. So... Let's say you have a three or four person uh, shop to, mm -hmm. to uh, brokerage, two LOs, yeah. but you want to scale a little bit, right? Yeah. Maybe not to the size of where you guys are mm -hmm. yet, because that takes time. Okay. Um, but let's say you're in that uh, gross revenue, 500, 600,000, right? Okay. You, you're running a nice, a nice brokerage, mm -hmm. right? But you do want to scale. Where do you suggest you go to go find support staff mm -hmm. like you're good with the with the loan officers but yeah. you need support to scale or you're just going to be stuck in this one spot yeah where do you see what's the first step you take like how do you find somebody yeah how do you find someone so what, what i do is i start telling every single person that i come into contact with who i'm looking for so you go and you meet meet one of your your friends and you're hanging out and mm -hmm. you're like hey do you happen to know anybody that is smart that is, you know, that, mm -hmm. that would fit the culture, they're, they're good people, and that is coachable, right? Like, do you know anybody like that? Do you know anybody that's currently working in another job that they, they just, they don't really like? Mm -hmm. You know, and th they'll always be like, you know what, my friend so-and-so, or, you know, look, my, my wife's friend, she's awesome. 
and you know she's coming off maternity leave and she's looking to go back to work. You just need to communicate that message out there exactly who you're looking for and go get good people. I never go on like Indeed or I, n- I don't want somebody else to hire for me. I want to know that these are good people and I want somebody else to vouch for that person. Do they necessarily have to be in the industry? No, no, no. I never no, hire I like in the that. industry. Okay. I, I don't want people that are in the industry. They have bad habits. They They're got tainted a bit. Y- yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, they have these certain expectations and now they have something to compare to. I look for people, honestly, that they, like one of my, my best employees, her name is Nas. She's phenomenal. Yeah, she Peter. literally runs my business, right? Pete probably mentioned her too. Yeah. We love her so much. And she was doing like medical billing, right? And when I brought her back, you know, into the industry, it, it was awesome because we paid her more than she was used to making before. So now she's extremely she's thankful. Happy. She's right. happy. And we've given her new responsibilities. We give her the ability to, to change things up. But she's so coachable because she's not saying, oh, well, at my last company, we did this. Or I don't agree with this. Or your process isn't as good as it was there. And so I like to hire people that I can groom. That you can groom. Yeah. But you're looking at those three qualities, like you said, that's so important. It's, it. it's about the person. It's not yeah. about the industry. It's exactly right? right. It's about the person. So if we go even more detailed there, yeah. you, you always talk about reinvesting in your business. Yeah. Uh, you were on me yesterday when I was asking, you know, we're out, you know, out having a drink, whatever yeah. it is. And you're like, reinvest, reinvest. Yeah. So for someone that's in that range, 500, 600,000, small brokerage, I mean, if we're talking numbers, obviously you don't want to undercut people. That's going to hurt the cu- culture. Yeah. They might be resentful, whatever it is. Uh-huh. But what are you looking at in terms of those numbers, in terms of paying someone? Yeah. Like, is there a number figure on that? So let, or is that let's too, touch a little bit on like, like what it is to reinvest. Got like, it. W- like what does that mean? How much should I be reinvesting, mm-hmm. right? I reinvest all of my money into other avenues. So I want to diversify. I'm reinvesting into rental properties, into flip properties, into Airbnb properties, into different pieces of technology. I'm, I'm reinvesting all my money because, like me, I like my back against the wall. What does that yep. do? When your back's against the wall, you want to work harder. You want to, you know, get better. You're not sitting there looking at your bank going, I'm cool. You're like, shoot, where did all that money go? Oh, it's all in investments that are paying me passively. But it's going to inspire you to work harder. So the very first way that you reinvest is in yourself and in your own business. So don't go and buy that new car. Don't go and, right, send out direct mail campaign. Figure out what's my return on investment. Do Facebook advertising. Hire your employees that will help you grow. So you want to take, take the money that, that you need to live. Set up your reserves. Every single thing in addition to that, reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. And now to, to kind of touch on, on what you were saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, is how do you know how much to pay somebody? Yeah, I think that's right? a question a lot of people have. It is. They just don't know. So, so the way that I do it is if, if somebody comes in, you know, and they're like, okay, um, I'm going to, I'm a assistant, right? Don't base it on like just regular assistant type pay, you know, where okay. some people would say, oh, well, I'm only going to pay $15 an hour, right? Look at what they're currently getting paid and really evaluate what this person is going to be able to do for you and your business. So first off, start off and say, okay, well, what are you getting paid now? They say, oh, 45 grand a year. Okay, perfect. Well, I want to pay you more. That way you're excited about the opportunity. Mm-hmm. But then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a quarterly bonus based on you know, what we accomplish. So I set up measurable goals every single quarter. And then at that point, depending on how well that they do, is how much that I can bonus them. And, and that keeps people motivated. It holds them accountable. It gets them inspired. And then I bring in the entire team. And, and then everyone knows exactly what they're all doing to contribute to our overall goal. Nice. Okay. And then we do trips, too, to where, like, the AIM trip was, it was designed around all of us hitting our goals. So if each person hit their goals, then everybody got a paid trip to Vegas. They got to go to the AIM event. And we celebrated. Can you say how many it. people hit that? Uh, we we you hold people accountable too, yeah, because it's a business. Yep, right. So we we had over twenty loan officers come out to to aim, but our direct team, the ones that won that right. trip, I think it was about eleven people. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's and it awesome. was it was all of our support staff. So we had like our digital advertising team there. We had our um, loan processors. We had um, some of our our loan officer support. 
Yeah, everybody was there. It was cool. great. Yeah, I'd like to break down the the company a bit more then, too. Okay. So the different uh, uh, regions that you have in the company, right? Yeah. Well, to take a step back, so okay. Peter is yeah. more of the producing Correct. owner, yeah. Correct. right? Yeah. Because that's his strengths. Yeah. And for you, it's more running running the business as a whole. Uh, am yeah. I right in yeah. saying and that? And growing it and communicating the vision and... Yeah, what like are your trading different uh, so basically what I do is I focus on our um, our image right so okay. I'm the guy that's out there with our realtor partners in the community um, all of our our company's brand right so I okay. represent the brand um, I'm also the one that communicates our vision with our employees and I'm the one that hires specific um, teams. So okay. portfolio retention team. I recruited a kid from Ohio. He moved from Ohio. Whoa. Our digital advertising team, my my guy worked for Gary V. Literally worked for Gary V. So Let's I get I recruit I direct recruited him. Nice. I knew who I wanted. I would pay him more and I gave him an opportunity to move to Cali and and work on our team, right? So there it's it's very intentional, very strategic and we're building out different compartments within our business to grow are you in a good spot now or do you want to continue to scale up like what's what's your two or three year goal at this point wow i like that question yeah so um what we're doing right now is we're being very intentional on um really honing in specific departments so with our our digital ads team they have specific goals we didn't we didn't used to operate like that it was just kind of fly by the pretty reactionary right? yeah, yeah totally and, and we didn't have a clear vision for everybody. This is new. Like literally 2019, I set out to have the best year of my life and I made that decision right around now, right? So towards the end of 2018, I said, look, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm really gonna focus on legitimizing my business and reinvesting in different departments to help me grow. And um, so we have personal production goals, you know, Peter and myself. Mm -hmm. So our personal production, we wanna get to 100 units a month. Okay, then we have our company goals. Our company goals are more so surrounded around the departments, uh, legitimizing each one, becoming the best in those. So I encourage. So you're each not making department. it overwhelming. You're taking yeah. each department yep. and making each one as best as, as they can be. Correct. Okay. So, not to so what off. we do is we get together and I say, okay, Andreas, he's the one that, that focuses on all of our digital ad. What people do you need to have the best digital advertising? You know, That's the group? reinvestment part right yeah. there. So okay. like, who do you need? How do I, do I need more video guys? Do I need more content creators? Do I need more guys doing automations? Cool. Like, what do you need in a perfect world? And again, I learned this from Matt Ishbia. He brings people together, all the top 25 mortgage brokers. We give him the ideas, and he goes and implements it. So I don't act like I know. I don't know digital advertising. Right. Andy does. So Andy tells me exactly what he needs to, to come up with the best digital ads team. And then same with portfolio retention. How do we, what do you need me to build out? Like, what do you need in order to communicate with our past clients on a whole nother level? Like in a dream world, what does that look like? They give me the ideas, and then I execute. So you're constantly looking at uh, other people that you've hired yeah. because your strength isn't in these departments, mm -hmm. looking at them for their support, yeah. and then constantly reinvesting back into them. Yeah. You've been reinvesting your whole life. Whole life. And honestly, like coming out here, this is a, I'm reinvesting in myself. Yeah. I had to pay to fly yep. my ass here mm -hmm. from California on a red eye, so I don't miss time with my family, you know, so I literally red eyed out here. I get to hang out with guys like you, mm -hmm. Anthony, who I, I love like a brother. And now I, I also set up meetings with uh, like Matt Boyce and Boyce um, is the man. Justin. Shout like, out to Matt. Dude, I love those guys. So now I'm reinvesting in myself. I actually pay out of my pocket, but now we're gonna connect. I'm gonna grow those relationships. We're gonna become better friends and we're gonna help each other win. So that's where I'm going to go and I'm going to bring value to them. And then they're going to bring gonna value to me and we're going to grow. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit uh, kind of off topic yeah. uh, topic here, but the work life balance. Yeah. I know that's very, very important to you. Yeah. Like you just said, you uh, red eye out to here. You don't yep. want to miss too much time with your family. You yeah. have two young yeah. kids at home, I right? Have a one year old and a four year old. Right. So yeah. it, it, you saw my three yesterday. It's pure chaos. Yeah. So it, it could be chaotic, right? Yeah. So how, how are you doing that right now? Are you right. splitting up your day? Can you break down that, that yep. whole thing? And, and really where the mindset comes from, right? If for me, everything's all about mindset. So if I were to ask myself, like, 
I challenge every single person to do this. Write down what are the most important things to you, right? Like, what's most important? And I guarantee a lot of people, they're going to start off and they're going to go, family. family. Okay. So you're telling me that the family is the most important thing. How much time are you spending with your family? Do you go on, like, unique one-on-ones with your son or your daughter? Like, are you taking them out one-on-one? Are you leaving work in the middle of a day to take them to the pumpkin farm or, or whatever? Or, or are you saying, sorry, babe, I can't make it. I'm slammed. Right. Like, okay, so now that you have it all written down, what's the most important thing to you? Like, how much time are you investing in those individuals? So if I were to die young, did I have it figured out? Mm -hmm. How did I live? How am I going to be remembered? Am I going to be remembered as Shelby, the guy that made a bunch of money? That's not who I want to be remembered for. So when I, when I checked myself, right, I literally just life checked myself. Was there a time when that happened? It literally happened about two years ago because okay. I, was, I was working day and night. I literally was disrespecting my wife by, by saying, you know what? The phone's more important than you. This is how we get paid. Like, what am I doing? I got this all wrong. So I, I took a very heavy toll on my own heart to really look at my life and say, is this really who you want to be remembered by? So I, I took it super serious. And now everything is, a, is always trying to figure out like, okay, if my family's the most important, then that means that my family comes before work. <sighs> okay. Dang, right. that was a change for me because I didn't do that. That's a, and that's a decision that, that you had to, obviously, if you ask me, yeah, family, but am I going to do it? Yeah. So you actually put it into action because we've all said that. Yeah. I mean, uh, hey, Rachel, my wife, like I, I have, to, I got to make money. I'm the one making the money. Like we've said those things, I'm yeah. sure in the past. Yep. So, so you did it about two years ago. Yep. You probably said that before, and but that, now you did it. Yep. You took and, I, action. and I had to bring people on, you know, like Peter wasn't, wasn't my partner. He was one of my loan officers. So I gave Pete half my company. Well, why? Because Peter is the key to me spending more time with my family, and that's the most important thing in my life. It's crazy, but you know what's gr- even crazier is once I did that, and now I spend more time with my family than ever, I'm now making more money. My business is, that is growing crazy even that works? more. And now I've realized how important that that is, and how, when I talk about culture, I encourage my guys to go home. Go home. Spend that time with your family. Don't you dare miss that dance recital. You go. And then what that does is it creates an even better culture, and now everyone loves it. Their husband and their wives are supporting the business instead of bitching about it and saying, come home. You mentioned that right in the beginning of of this podcast. Like, your spouse needs to be on board because if he or she is not, something's wrong there. Exactly. So it is. It's yeah. wow. It's all. It's all going back to that sure. work life balance because we know so how good. chaotic this yeah. this industry can be. So I encourage people yeah. to not put a time on like when in the morning, right? So my morning routine. A lot of other people. What you're hearing, what you're getting beaten your head yeah, is. Can you give the day to day? Get there early. You work longer. Don't do that. I don't want you to do that. What are you going to do? You're going to burn yourself out. Your your spouse is not going to going to want to be with you. You know they're going to think that your work's more important. It's not. Your family is more important. You have to keep that in check. So how my morning routine looks, right? I still wake up really early. So it's like 5.30 in the morning, I'm up. My wife's actually going to the gym at that point. So I'm getting things, you know, situated with, with you know, our, our life basically mm-hmm. in the morning. So I'm the one that's getting my kids up in the morning, helping them get ready, getting myself ready. I'm getting in the zone. I always listen to a podcast. Just this morning, I listened to a podcast by Ed Milet about listening and becoming a better listener, right? So I'm working on that trait. And so I listen to a podcast. I get in the right frame of mind. My son wakes up. My other son wakes up. We're hanging out. My son will always want to play cars in the morning. Right, this is right. something that I would never do. I'm like, sorry, sorry, son. I, I got to get ready for work. No. Now I'm like, okay, you want to play cars? Let's play cars. I'm not looking at the clock. I'm not worried about the clock. I don't give a shit what time it is. I get my sons ready. Then, uh, you know, my wife comes home. My wife makes us uh, breakfast. We eat breakfast as a family every morning. Again, not looking at the clock. I don't care. My wife's going to make me, me lunch. Super appreciative of, you know, try not to take those types of things for granted. Mm-hmm. And I drop my son off to school about twice a week because I know that he loves that. So, and then whatever time I get in the office, that's what time I get in the office. Right. That's the constant I saw with, with Peter as well. Yeah. When, when, when we were talking, it's when he's working, 
he's working. Mm -hmm. And when he's with his family, he's with his family. Yeah. There's not a a, a mix yeah. of the two, right? You kind of you cut it off. Yeah. And we see that a lot in in this industry where everyone's just always on. Yeah. You constantly have to be on. So the, I'll I'll kind of I'll I'll be more real with you in that aspect. Yeah. So I would love to say that I turn my phone off when I get home. It's impossible. Right. It's right. It's no way. So I am still on the phone. Definitely. I have to be. But I'm not making up excuses on why I have to be at work or, you know, like I'm I'm incorporating my work and my life. So it's not I don't hide that from my clients. I'm like, hey, I'm at home yep. right now. Like, I don't need to hide that. It's totally fine. Your clients are cool. They're humans. They want you to be just like them. They don't want you to be different than they are. They want you to connect with them. Hey, I'm sorry. My one year old, he's crazy. He's sitting yep. right here with me. So I apologize if if he's crazy. And you know what they say? They say, oh, my gosh, I have a one-year-old, too. Yeah, now you have a and bond with them. And now we connect. Yeah. It's like, oh, really? Oh, man, so you're dealing with, like, like my one-year-old, he still has a hard time sleeping, you know? And then it goes more and more deeper, and, and you develop better relationships. But I used to hide from that. I'd be like, shh. I'd run to the other side of the house and be like, be quiet. Dad's on the phone. And it's like, dude, no, I don't need to go that route. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I've, it's almost a selling technique. I remember when yeah. I was starting out. My oldest, I'd be at home and, and we'd be hustling. And like you said, I'm speaking to someone. They hear the, the baby in the background. Yeah. Oh, it's my one-year-old, two-year-old. Oh, and, and you have that connection, yeah. right? Now, I know you're not in the actual uh, trenches right now with selling yeah. because your strength is what we've been talking about, yeah. Peter. Um, but it, in terms of the – you're still in the process, though. Yeah. Like I was watching some of your videos, and like you are you're showing me yesterday as well – you're actually dealing with a lot of the realtors right now yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So you're, what are you doing with them yeah. to create content? That, that's the yeah. biggest thing, right? You're yeah. showing them, here's a video I did. Do you want to do the same thing? Yeah. Can you talk about that a bit, yeah. how you're forming relationships with referral partners? So what we did there is I literally outlined, like, what is the most valuable thing in our industry right now, right? Like, where is the industry going? And Gary Vee talked about it at Fuse, and it's you need to establish your own brand, mm -hmm. right? What's your brand? What are you all about? How do you connect with the people who know, like, and trust you? If you meet with a real estate agent, right, first off, you got to lure them in, right? I use this analogy, how do you catch a cat, right? You, you chase a cat down and try to catch it, you're never going to be able to catch mm -hmm. it. You put some milk out, you put some food out, you got to lure that cat in. So that's what I do. I create really good content for real estate agents, and then I, I market that content to those realtors. So they're seeing it because I've marketed it to mm -hmm. them, right? And I'm reinvesting in marketing. And you're being real about it? Like, to realtors. This is it's what right. I'm doing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hitting you with an ad. Sometimes I'll literally even say it in my ad. I'm like, if you want to connect with your past clients – by running digital ad campaigns like I'm running to you, then click the link below and schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. And then at that point, what those agents are doing is they schedule that meeting with me, and I ask them the, a very simple question right up front is, where do you get all your business? Because that, that's one thing they care about is like, are you going to help me make more money right. and grow my business? Be real. Right. Perfect. So they say, from past clients. Okay. Or, you know, my sphere, right? I, I get referrals. Is okay, that what well, you're seeing most realtors are, say they, they get their business they from? They say it every single time. So you're trying to change the game a bit. I right? am. You yeah. are changing the I, game. I'm saying, right. so now at that point I go, okay, well, how do you connect with them? You get referrals. Well, how, how are you connecting with those people? How are you providing value for their life so they want to refer you business? And they're like, well, I call them. I do maybe, you know, some, some campaigns to where I, I get them to, to show up at, you know, a social or happy hour or a client appreciation party. That's about it. So what I do is I'm actually showing them, here's how you should be connecting through using content. So let's teach them, like, how much does it cost to remodel a kitchen and how much value are you going to get out of that, hmm. right? So let's do a, a content piece in a beautiful kitchen and we're going to talk about that. I'm going to say, hey, so how much does it typically cost to remodel a kitchen and how much value are you getting out of it in your market? How much does it cost to do a, a bathroom remodel and how valuable is that? How much does it cost to remodel an entire home 
And, and then how much, you know, are you going to be able to get out of that? What are the avenues? Mm -hmm. And what the, the real estate agents are doing is they're actually endorsing me to all of their past clients. Right, right, now. right. So now these, these people, now I'm teaching them how to win. We're teaching their, everybody that's in their sphere, like, yo, look, this is, this is good stuff. If I were to Airbnb my property, like you asked me that last night, hey, yeah. I got a property. That's valuable for you. Let's do that and let's send that out to all everyone who already knows, likes, and trusts you. Let's teach them to start thinking along these lines. So what I'm doing is I'm having these meetings with them and I'm showing them how to automate the business, how to create good content, and we're doing it together. And now it's a true partnership. And you have a whole studio at your office. Yeah. So you're using that. I am. Over you're bringing them over. all in. So you're bringing in your real estate agents. They're seeing the operation. Yeah. They're seeing the culture. Yep. And that, I mean, and they're, they're connecting with my team and they're like, wow, what you have here is really special. Then we're becoming friends. Every single agent that I work with is a friend of mine now. So I, cool. I'm strategically finding agents that I know I could have a friendship with. Yeah, you're only working with people that you want to work with, too, yeah. at this point in, yeah. your, in, your, in your game. Exactly. I would say. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, one thing, uh, and this was jumping out as, as you're talking here, is change, right? We have a, this industry's, you've been through more cycles than I have been. Yeah. But there's a lot of change in this industry. There's a lot of change with maybe you lose a realtor partner or someone from your staff. Uh, just, I mean, let's be real, that, that could happen. You're, yeah. you're building a culture where hopefully they don't leave. Yeah. But how are you dealing with change when, when something big occurs like that? Yeah. So, like from a high-level mindset even, if yeah. you want to go there. So, so really, I've always had to adapt to change. You think about it. I was in the market for like a year and a half, and the ceiling fell out, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I had to adapt, right? So that's something that just me as an individual, I've always been adapting but as a small business owner and as, a, as an independent mortgage broker, what you have to do is be ahead of the curve. These big companies, that's the edge that you have on them is that they have so many different levels of management to make something happen that if they wanted to create a new department or they wanted to create better content, it'd take them years to be able to figure that out. You being independent, you're nimble. You can start creating things immediately. Yeah, I like that. And so that's kind of what, what you, I think that you need to do is have a focus. What do you think is the most valuable piece, right? I was talking to one of the guys yesterday, and we were talking about uh, recruiting. He's like, man, I, I, I don't know, you know how I should recruit. And he goes, so I, I hired a recruiting agency to recruit for me. And I said, no, 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 no. Treat this like a sport, right? Direct recruit who you want. He only wants four loan officers. He's like, dude, if I can get four loan officers, that would change the game. Okay, well, don't rely on somebody else to do it. You do it. So identify who the loan officers are that you want and go after them and get them, teach them, mm -hmm. hang out with them. Be so persistent that you actually become friends with them. You will get those four guys to come over because you have the best option available. Wow. Yeah, that's... I remember in the meeting yesterday, you were very passionate about that. <laughs> you stopped the meeting. I did. Moved like this, <laughs> right? And was like, yo, this is what maybe you should be doing because it's, yeah. it's working for you. So do you treat the more, like you just said, treat it like a game. Yes, this like, is a game. Do you play sports Life growing is up? A game. Like, like, do you Matt do you see HBO's this mentality, this is a game, you know? And you, you're either going to win and you're going to lose. Or you're going to be average, and that's the worst. Like, I'm not, I'm playing to win. I want the life that I want. I mapped out my life. I live a life by design. I'm designing it. I'm, oh. I am in charge of my own life. And as an entrepreneur, you have the ability to be in charge of your own shit. So what, what I encourage everybody to do is write that life out. How do you want it? You want four loan officers? Go and get them. Don't rely on somebody else. Go and get them. How are you going to get them? Well, you got to get in front of them. So mm -hmm. how about you create really good content right? And, and put it towards them and find, a, find something in their business that you know that they want and show them that you have the keys to that. Get their attention and then take them out to a nice dinner, right? Who's going to say no to that? Get the nicest dinner spot in your town, invest that money in, bet on yourself, mm -hmm. take them to dinner. If, they, if they're a huge sports fan, say, hey man, I got courtside tickets to the Lakers and the Warriors. You want to go? Nobody's saying no to that. Yeah. You're going. And now they owe you. They owe you that time. Right, right, right. You, you want to, you, you, you play golf? Join a country club. And, and now you have something that everyone else wants. Every other golfer wants to play that country club. You invite them golfing, you got them for four hours. Be very intentional. Learn and about. know yeah. how you're going to recruit people. 
You want four? Here's how you're going to get them. Go after them. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so we talked about where, when I asked you a question, where do you see yourself in two or three years, right? Yeah. What's your prediction of, of the industry in, mm. in two years, two to three years? Like, where do you yeah. see it going? It's, we're in a kind of a changing type cycle, right? Totally. Right. Where do you see it in two, three years? So to be 100% honest with you, this yeah. is probably not the answer that a lot of loan officers want to hear. You better start scaling your business because the margins are going to be more compressed. So you're, you're not going to be able to make what you were making at one point. So for one thing, you better get on your game and start playing to win right now because right now the window's open. There's a lot of opportunity out there, and you better make sure that you're getting your piece, right? Because that's what's going to catapult you into this new realm of, of how things and are going And what's that piece you're trying to build, so, I guess? As, as there's more mortgage brokers that are, that are coming into the space, as retail is getting more compressed, as you know, Quicken Loans is working on Rocket Mortgage and all that shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? The margins are going to go down. People are going to get more competitive. So you need to do more business. So you better start reinvesting in yourself so you can keep up with that. So I think that the margins are going to get more compressed. I think that... Um, that the game is going to start getting played at a different level. We're already starting to see that. People are leveling up. You know, the, it's, I, I, two years ago, I was the only one that was creating any content. And now everyone's talking about creating content. So what do I need to do? I need to create better content. I need to stay on the forefront of everything. Mm -hmm. So invest in technology, come up with procedures, invest in good people, and work on scaling your business to do more loans because you're going to need to do more. Right. So you're saying... Yeah, build it now and counteract the margin compression that we're already starting to see with volume. Yeah. For the most part. Yes. Streamline the process. So I'll give you an idea of how my process works. So the loan officer, again, every person is, is, has their u unique situation. So we have somebody in the transaction for our entire pipeline, right? So Peter's the loan officer. Peter's going to take that call, and he's treating it like there's strategy behind it, right? He's coming up with an actual strategy for that client. He's pitching it. He's articulating it. He's finding out what their goals are, and he's showing them, here's your roadmap to being on, the, on your mortgage plan. And he's very intentional. Oh, he's really good. And specific. Yep. Yeah. That, that's why I was in awe, because we're in that 15, 20 unit small brokerage. Yeah. He's at the 40, 50. You guys have a goal of 100. 100, yeah. But you still want to keep the same quality. Yeah. So every yeah. every single person has a specific goal. Role and, and goal. And he won't so, give that up. So he won't he, throw shit against the wall. This no. is how we're doing it. Yep. He's passionate. Yeah. But, sorry, so, go ahead. So now we have a communicator, right? This is, this is Nas. What Nas is doing is she's communicating with all parties. Peter's not good at communicating to all parties. Right. Because the, the real estate agent on the other side, she wants an update. Well, Pete's selling another deal. So it's hard for him to give that other realtor an update, but it's really important. So what Nas is doing is she's communicating with the client. She's communicating with the listing agent and the buyer's agent, keeping the title company happy because we know that if they're not happy, then they lag on us. We don't want them to lag on us. So her whole role is communicating. I got a guy, Nick Wilrich. What his goal is, we call magic makers. He's trying to make yeah. magic within the transaction. So everybody has their ear to the ground. And we're trying to figure out ways that we can make magic for our clients, right? Create a referable experience. Can you give some examples of that? Yep. Because so it was here, cool when Peter was oh, talking about that. Oh, Pete talked about that. Yeah, yeah. So here's, here's how Magic cool. Maker works. So say you got a, a client that um, is a huge football fan, right? Man, I'm so excited for the game. Hey, where, where are you watching the game at? Oh, I'm, I'm watching it at my house with all my buddies. Cool. How many guys you got coming over? We're going on Safeway.com, and we're doing an order of, you know, Hey, man, uh, let me get you some chips, dip, you know, party stuff. And we're having that delivered to his house, right? They're literally knocking on the door, blowing him away. I got this idea when I was on an anniversary trip to Napa with my wife. We get a knock at the door, and somebody had bought us a uh, bottle of champagne. And it said, hey, Shelby, happy anniversary, love so-and-so. And, -so. and, I'm and like, you were blown away, right? I was blown you away. Had no idea, yeah. Blown away. And this, is, this to tell you the truth... This was from a competitor loan guy sent this to me and my wife. And I, I was blown away. I'm like, holy okay. cow, like what a good guy, right? Did you recruit him yet? Is he on your team? <laughs> I did. He, he's an owner of another company. <laughs> but, <I got> you. <laughs> um, you know, Misa, Lisa and Matt Lund for Lund Mortgage, phenomenal brokers, great friends of ours. I was just in Cabo for my birthday. They bought me a bottle of tequila, came through, you know, it was like, happy birthday, Shelby. We love and appreciate you. Like, are you kidding me? 
the way that that made me feel. So we're trying to give that same feeling back to all of our people. Um, part of our culture, we create something new every single month. It's like either a, a UWL hat, a t-shirt, a, a pair of shorts, like something cool, sandals, like cool. just whatever it is, right? So what we're doing is we're actually delivering those things out to all of our past clients, current clients. We have phone chargers we're sending out. So just kind of circle that back. In the middle of our process, everybody has a specific goal all the way through, all the way through post close. How we're able to scale it, Peter doesn't, doesn't necessarily talk to the client after the, the initial call, but we have automated videos yeah, yeah, that yeah. go out. So we have lead automation going out, pre-approval automation going out. Peter's educating them. Have you ever thought about a 15 year, a 20 year? We have the ability to choose 21, 22, 23. Let's pick the perfect loan for you. Remember, ask me about this, right? And so we're creating that experience to where they're learning from us the whole entire time. We're exceeding their expectations and uh, scaling the business. Yeah, how many people touch one loan, do you think? Man. All the way through. We probably have six different people Touching that Touching loan. it. Yep. And the most important part with that is setting the expectation up right. So it's like, hey, Peter went over your strategy. Do you have any other questions for Pete before I take over? Okay, hey, my name is Nas. This is my role, and this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be communicating with you throughout the transaction. Right. And then this is Marsha. She's going to be our loan processor. Once your loan gets approved, she's going to reach out for these conditions. This is Nick. Nick is our client services manager, and he's going to be reaching out to you guys for, you know, reviews or any questions or anything that maybe we had some hiccups mm -hmm. with to make sure that you're having a good client That's experience. That's cool. It's such an emotional, I hate saying the word transaction, but it's emotional yeah. for people. And to have that much support along the way, yeah, it, it's, it's really cool. I mean, you're yeah. really overly doing it in a good way. I'm trying. <laughs> why, why wouldn't you? Yeah. It makes total sense. Uh, well, Shelby, we have like five, ten minutes left, right? All right. So I want to get like one or two things yeah. that you want to tell everyone out there, whatever, whether it's about mindset, work-life balance, yeah. where the industry's going, a couple things that's going to sit, stick in their head. Yeah. You know? All right. Well, um, number one thing is you need to create your, the, the life that you want to have. So I encourage you to map that out, live a life by design. So Map it out. How does it look? What are the most important things to you? What are your goals, right? I, in 2018, I literally said, mm -hmm. for 2019, I'm going to make this the best year of my life. And how am I going to do that? What does that look like? And, you know, creating a clear vision, I think, is, is key, right? And then sharing that vision with every single person that needs to be a part of it. You need to share that whole vision out. Second thing is I would say do not be afraid to reinvest, to reinvest into your business. Don't be afraid to bet on yourself. And it's kind of scary because you don't want to open up and tell people how it really is, right? But you need to because those are the people that are going to help you grow. So find another person that is another mortgage broker that may have the life that you want. Reach out to that person and say, you know what, you're doing the amount of volume that I'm doing, or I really like the way that, that you, you know, have work-life balance, or whatever it is, and then be completely honest with them, and let them coach you through it. Don't think that you know, right? That, that's what I'm doing over and over. I'm, I'm seeking people out, and, and I'm not recreating what they're doing. I'm doing exactly what they tell me to do, and then I'm growing from that. So those are my two bits of advice. Um, is 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 map it out and create the vision love it man boom shelby elias united wholesale lending i got that right you got it all right cool man yo thank you where can thank we you. find you man you can find Everywhere, me on instagram right? shelby elias you can find me on facebook um shelby elias just my name um and if anybody has any questions don't be afraid to reach that's out that's cool and, and that's the truth man you were talking with me yesterday asking me how how you can help me yeah i know you're a busy guy but you've you've figured out <laughs> your life by design man yeah, so yeah. you're willing to help so that's cool. cool all right thank you guys this was a broker to broker podcast brought to you by aim association of independent mortgage experts uh, i'm jp hussey and this was shelby lies thanks guys